Hello students, today we are going to start with our new textbook for 5th standard environmental studies part 1. In this book they have taken many different types of chapters that means some chapters are of geography, some are of health and hygiene and different science topics also have been covered in this. The first topic that we are going to see today is our earth and our solar system on page number 1. I am your teacher Rashmi Liu and I will be taking you through the entire textbook. Our earth and our solar system. We know earth is the planet that we live on and the solar system is the entire system of all the planets that is including the earth and the other planets also which go around the sun. You know that we feel that the sun moves from one side to another but actually it is the earth which moves. Similarly, there are many other planets which move around and this entire system is known as the solar system. So, look at your books now. When we look up from an open ground, we see the sky. So, if you look up, you can see the sky on top if you go out in the open. In a clear night sky, we can see many stars. Now, why have they given clear night sky? If it is cloudy, then you are not likely to see the stars. Especially in a city, because there are so many city lights, you do not see the stars clearly. But if you go out in the field or you go out into an open space where there are no lights at all and then you look up, you will be able to see a starry sky. Let us see what a starry sky looks like. In our lesson, our earth and our solar system, the first picture that you are going to see is of a starry sky. See over here, this is what a starry sky looks like. Starry means full of stars. You can see here, full of stars, okay, that is called a starry sky. Let us continue our lesson. They are very far away from the earth. They look very small and they look very tiny because they are far away. Some stars are prominent, prominent. Now see this word, prominent. means obvious. Obvious which means we can see it very clearly. So, some stars may look very tiny, you may not see it properly and some will be seen very clearly. Okay, so, some are prominent while some are tiny and faint. Tiny means very small and faint means it is little unclear because they are either far away, sometimes because of clouds also you cannot see it properly. If we look at them carefully, we find that many of them twinkle, but some do not. You must have learned twinkle, twinkle little star when you were small. So, some of them twinkle. In Hindi they call them tim tim karte tare and sometimes you feel they are not twinkling. The sun and the moon are comparatively close to the earth. Comparatively means compared to what? The other stars. You may not know that the sun is also a star, but the sun is quite close to us. So, it looks like it is very big. Of course, it is big, but there are many stars which are also big, but because they are far away, we see it as very tiny. So, the moon and sun is comparatively closer, so that is why it looks big. So, we can see their round shapes clearly. Very clearly you can see that the moon is round. Of course, the shape of the moon keeps on changing depending on the phase of the moon. The sun, the moon, the stars and the planets are all known as heavenly bodies. Heavenly bodies are those which are seen in the sky. So, all that you can see in the sky, you can see the stars, moon, sun, all those are your heavenly bodies. Now, try this. Try this means you have to try it. Observe the sky on two clear nights. When it is absolutely clear, when it is not cloudy, that time look up at the sky. Keeping a gap of about one week between. 
That means do not uh, look at the sky today and immediately tomorrow. Keep one week in between. Base your observation on the following points. First, brightness of the heavenly bodies. So you might feel that today it was bright, but then after a week when I saw it, it was not so bright or maybe it was brighter. Second point, whether they twinkle. So you will notice that some stars twinkle while some do not. Their color and their size. So how big do they look or how tiny or do they look nice and bright? Does it look silvery or does it look dull? And changes in their position. Now, this star that you saw last time over here, maybe you say this time it has gone here. Now, some of the stars we can recognize because they form certain patterns. Otherwise, you will say how will I know if the star has shifted from here to there? Every star looks the same. But some of the stars form a particular shape, so they are easy to recognize. On both nights, draw a picture of the illuminated portion. Now, let us look at this word illuminated, that is a difficult word. Illuminated means lit up. Lit up portion means that which is bright. The part which is bright, so let us look at that part of the moon and note how it changes from day to day. Some days you will see it is a full moon. Sometimes you will see a thin sliver of a moon. So that means on each day you will see that the shape of the moon changes. Now, for teachers they have given for sky watching activity, call the children along with their guardians to a large open area on a clear dark night. This is not possible sometimes. Some schools do call them at night so that they can watch the stars through the telescope. Now, you can see on the cover of your book over here. You can see over here the children are watching, seeing the stars and the heavenly bodies along with their teacher through a telescope. From the telescope, they will be able to see very clearly. It will seem as if the stars are quite close to them. But always we cannot call the children at night. Some parents may not allow it. That is why it is given with the permission of the guardians or you can call your parents also along. And then you will be able to understand. You will be able to see where is the north star or even the Venus, which is actually a planet, looks bright like a star. So, you will be able to see all that very clearly. But that activity can be done if your parents are willing and of course, I, your teacher, will always be willing to take you. Let us continue. Now, we are going to first learn about stars. The heavenly bodies that twinkle are called stars. Stars have their own light. That means they are bright on their own. The sun is also a star, but it is close to us. It is very big and that is why you might think, no, it looks very different, but it is also a star. It is closer to us than any other star. That means no other star is as close to us as the sun is. Hence, hence means therefore or so, it appears big and brilliant. Brilliant means bright. In its bright light, during the day, we cannot see other stars. So, the stars are always there. Even in the daytime, they are there. But because the sun is so bright, that all these little stars cannot be seen. That is why at night, we can see the starry sky very clearly. Now, if you see the star, there are two ways you can draw a star. This star has five corners. If you feel this is difficult to draw, then you can draw one triangle upside down or you can draw another triangle the right side up. So, these are the two ways you can draw stars. Okay? These are five pronged and this has six points. So, both these are your stars. Next, let us look at planets. The heavenly bodies that do not twinkle are called planets. 
Now see if you have to write the definition. You cannot change the words. For stars what have they given? The heavenly bodies that twinkle are called stars. While planets, the heavenly bodies that do not twinkle are called planets. Planets do not have their own light. That means they are not bright, they are not luminous, they are not brilliant like the stars. They get light from the stars. So the stars will give it light. Planets revolve around a star even as they rotate around themselves. Now here we have two words revolve and rotate. When we say that earth revolves and rotates, rotate means it goes around its own axis. Okay, It goes round and round this way. But revolve means it goes around the sun. So when a planet goes around the sun, it is known as a revolution. It revolves around it and rotation means it goes around its own axis. So planets revolve around a star, we basically revolve around which star? The sun, even as they rotate around themselves. Now let us look at our solar system. First, let us look at the first planet that we will learn about and that is planet Earth. We also call this the blue planet. Blue planet because you can see nearly three-fourth of the planet is covered with water. So, from space, when you see planet Earth, it looks blue in color. That means the continents or the part which is land is less and the part which is water, that means the oceans and the seas are more. Our Earth is a planet, which means it does not have light of its own and you will find that it gets light from the star and we get our light from the star known as the sun. It gets its light from the sun. It moves around the sun. When it moves around the sun, we call it revolution. Its movement around the sun is called the revolution of the earth. So we will see how the earth revolves around the sun. This is the sun, which is also a star that is the closest star near us and it goes around the sun. Now you think that the sun moves because you can see it rising in the east and setting in the west. But actually it is we who move and that is why it seems as if the sun is moving. We move in the opposite direction that means from west to east. If you did not understand how is it possible when you go by train. Your train is moving forward. Can you see how the trees seem to run past? The trees are not moving. The train is moving. That means we are moving. So we on earth are moving. The sun is not moving at all. We are going around the sun. That means revolving around the sun. Its movement around the sun is called the revolution of the earth. Besides earth, there are seven other planets that revolve around the sun. They are Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. Now, how will you remember which one comes first, which one comes second? So let us see the nine planets. This is the sun and you can see that these are the nine planets starting with Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto. In your textbook, they have not given Pluto. The reason being, earlier in old textbooks, they used to give Pluto as the ninth planet. But now they consider Pluto as a dwarf planet. So in your textbook, Pluto is not given. How to remember this? I will give you one simple method. My very educated mother just showed 
us nine planets. Now, here if you see the first letter of each M, V, E, M, J, S, U, N and P. If you look at this, you can see it becomes easy to understand. My very educated mother just showed us nine planets. Learn that and keep that in your head. M stands for Mercury, V, Venus, E, Earth, M, Mars, J, Jupiter, S, Saturn, U, Uranus, N, Neptune and P, Pluto. So, it will be very easy to remember which one comes after the next. If you are given a question, name the planet which is closest to the sun, so that is Mercury. The one which is closest to earth, you can write Venus or Mars, but which is similar to earth. Can you see the size? Venus and earth is quite similar in size. Now, you might wonder what have they shown here? That is the moon. The way the earth goes around the sun, the moon is a natural satellite which also goes around the earth. So, when the earth goes around, the moon also goes around with it. Have you understood? Then you have Mars, Jupiter. Now, the one which is farther most from the sun is Pluto. So, naturally Pluto will be very cold because the heat of the sun will not reach up to there and the hottest planet will be Mercury. Earth is in a perfect situation where you get heat of the sun and it is also not so close that we will get burnt. If we were very far away, then we would not get the heat of the sun and it would be too cold. Have you got the nine planets?